Hi, this is Austin with Brush for Hire with another painting tutorial featuring the Kador Behemoth. So we're starting out with a, an assembled and primed behemoth model. Uh, this is the old metal one. Uh, it's a pretty heavy model and I've repositioned the leg down a bit so it's not doing its twinkle toes dance. So we're just going to start off dry brushing with some chainmail silver from the Citadel line and we're going to cover the whole model. This is going to, uh, to allow us to get that um, sort of pitted old steel look without a whole lot of effort. Uh, you make, want to make sure that you have a, a nice big brush for this. Don't try and dry brush with uh, just a, a tiny little detail brush. That'll take forever. So once we've got that wrapped up, we're going to switch over to some Chardon Granite. This is uh, sort of a, a dark gray color, but it has almost some green tones to it, almost like a, a really dark uh, drab color. This is one of the, the old foundation colors from Citadel, and I'm sure that there's some equivalent in the new line, but um, I'm not really sure what that is yet. Um, we're just going to, to essentially uh, do a base coat on all the plates that um, we want to, to be, uh, I guess, the, the color as opposed to the steel that's underlying. Uh, in some places I've opted to go around the spikes or screws, uh, but in certain areas where I don't think uh, that it's completely necessary, uh, we'll just go over all of them and if we decide that we want them to be silver again we'll just coat them silver at the end of the process here and hit these little spots on the backs of his hands I guess these are the things that make his fists armor piercing I don't really know exactly what they are they look almost like some sort of explosive devices all right we'll go ahead and get the top hatch here too All right, so we finished that up, and now we're moving on to the highlighting phase, and we're gonna do this with the airbrush. Um, I've loaded it up with Narlock Green foundation color, uh, and we're just going to sort of hit the high points on some of these panels. I've thinned it down quite a bit, so we're not gonna get a whole lot of opacity out of it, even though it's uh, one of the foundation colors. Um, we're just gonna try and hit the top edges of the panels, or anywhere that we think that light will be more likely to hit. We're just trying to achieve some uh, some subtle gradients across these panels. If you get a little bit of overspray onto the surrounding areas, it's not the end of the world. We can always uh, coat it in black and dry brush with silver again, but we're gonna try and keep it contained to the intended target. Alright, so up next we have some Mechrite Red, and we're going to start laying in some of the red details. We're going to get these shoulder pads. I'm trying to keep consistent brush strokes in one line as not to leave any sort of erratic brush patterns. And we're also going to hit the, uh, the top of the head here. We want to have at least some spot detail there with that. go and we're gonna take some chaos black and actually go back around the uh, the bases of these spikes to try and cut them back in we did have a little bit of uh, overspray onto them with the narlock green earlier so now it's time for some Devlin mud the ubiquitous uh, shading agent of the old line in the Citadel range we're gonna hit all of the red areas with this If you find that you're having some difficulty in making it lay flat, you may want to add some uh, thinner medium or flow improver. We're also going to use some of the same Devlin mud and try and uh, bring out some of these vent details all over the model. Uh, we've got um, a few really here and there all over the place. 
There's a bunch on the top, and we've got uh, a set of three on each one of these, um, I guess, uh, armor piercers on the fists. We're going to try and just confine it to the, uh, the crevices uh, and not get any on the outer surface. We'll also go around the shoulder pads and any of the other cracks and crevices that we really want to highlight on this model. Up next, we'll start in with a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one mix of old bronze from the Reaper line, Calvin Brown from the uh, Citadel Foundation line, and uh, Griffin Sepia, also from the Citadel line. It's a wash, though. We're going to coat all of the items that we would like to be brass, namely the shrouds around each one of the smokestacks and the uh, impact points for those armor-piercing fist pieces. You may have to come back around for a second coat for a lot of this stuff. We'll also be painting all of the uh, insignias, all of the Kador anvils. There's a few on the shoulder pads and top plate. Uh, and we'll also get the face guard. We've also got this banding around the guns as well as the, uh, I guess the insertion point for the, the clips of bombard rounds there that we'll also um, paint with this bronzy color just to sort of break up the masses of steel up top. We've also got the casings on these bombard rounds too. We'll leave the actual projectiles that steel color, but I think it'll be nice to color the, the shells, or the casings rather, um, with this bronze color too. So here, like I said before, we're uh, going to paint the ends of these sort of explosive caps on his, his uh, the backs of his hands. And we'll just take some plain old bronze from the Reaper line and paint the cog. We don't really want it to be the exact same color as the rest of him. So here we're going to just do uh, some highlights on the, uh, the crest of his, uh, his head there. We're going to use some Magma Red from the Reaper line. And then we'll go back in with straight Griffin Sepia as soon as all of this bronze is done drying. just coat all of the bronze areas that we painted in the previous step. So now we're going to do some dry brushing all over all of the uh, the bronze areas to try and show some uh, some more worn areas. We're going to be using aged pewter to give it sort of a worn weathered look. So now we're moving on to some weathering powders. We've got one of the Tamiya weathering uh, palettes here, and we're going to get some of the mud uh, colored pigment onto one of our sponge brushes. And we're just going to go over uh, the boiler area, areas that we think that might uh, gather water or have constant exposure to water, mostly uh, parts of the feet and uh, parts of the legs possibly some of the places around the boiler. Then we're going to go back and get the soot uh, powder and we're going to go around the smokestacks. We're going to get a little bit down onto the tops of these bronze areas that we just did just to uh, show where soot might have fallen. And then we will switch over to some Bata Black and essentially have some liquid soot. Basically soot that's mixed with water or other moisture uh, or oil uh, leaking out of these vents on top and sort of streaming down the sides of the behemoth. We don't want to overdo this part, um, but it, uh, it certainly makes it look neat to have um, some little dribbles of oil or soot washing down the sides. 
So up next, uh, we're going to take some PVA. I'm just going to pour some out onto this sheet of paper. And uh, this is going to be the basing material that we'll use. Um, we've got PVA and some of the uh, soft flake snow from Woodland Scenics, and we're just going to mix it up into a paste. This is going to allow us to apply it as essentially like a snow putty over the base uh, and really get some good texture. Now, though we've got a lot of glue in that paste, we're also going to want to put some glue down on the base so that it's got a nice wet surface to adhere to as opposed to just hoping that the little bit of moisture left in the uh, glue snow putty uh, is enough to hold it down. So we're just going to sort of spoon this on and then using a sculpting tool we'll just push it into place. You can use just about any kind of probe or stick. Um, you could even use a broken piece of a, a popsicle stick or a, a coffee stir to push this into place but we're just trying to keep it uh, lumpy and uh, not particularly smooth and just work it into the places that we we think that snow would be. Once that's dry just a little bit of matte varnish and you'll be all done. This has been a painting tutorial on the Kador Behemoth. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments if you feel so inclined and as always happy wargaming.